The airline CEOs I spoke to at the annual general meeting of IATA, now they're chomping up the bit for the infrastructure bill to finally become law. Billions of dollars are badly needed, so they say. They'll repair the terminals, the runways, and completely reform the U.S. air traffic control system. I asked Delta's Ed Bastian if he was confident that Washington would eventually find the deal. I think so. I think so. We were desperately needing it. You know, we look at our state of our country's infrastructure compared to most countries around the world. We're in woeful condition. Do you think Americans realize that? Do you think Americans realize that China is actually an exceptionally modern country with yeah. phenomenal infrastructure? I don't, I don't think most Americans do. You need to be out in the world to see the world, to, to understand that. You look at, the, look at the shipping crisis that we're having with, uh, with the supply chain and all the ships. And you know, part of that is technology. Part of that is infrastructure. And you think about China being at a point where we're not at. And they're actually able to manage their supply chains a hell of a lot better than we are in this country. Why is that so? Well, I think part of it is the it's when you when you don't have to ask for permission, uh, you can you can uh, you can do an awful lot of good and and, and take uh, take advantage of opportunity. But I think our our country has a uh, you know, we've got a lot of different views. You know, we're unfortunately a politically uh, divided society in our in our our nation right now, and we need leadership to step forward. Right now, on that point, I just want to clarify because clearly you're not. I, I, I don't believe you are advocating to move to a Chinese form of... No, uh, no, no. 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 Just, uh, but, but, but what I'm trying to understand then, if you don't want that, but you've got this divided nature back here, yeah. what does allow a system like this to gain benefits that puts it back on the road? Leadership is what you said. It's leadership, and it's one of the reasons why you see business leaders speaking out more than ever whether it's on trying to get the infrastructure bill. You know, many of us have, have, have weighed in vocally with our, with our legislators, stuff that typically we wouldn't have done uh, in, in past times. Uh, we, we need to keep our country moving forward and we need to get this, these investments made. There's, there's a thousand reasons why sustainability also a very important reason. We met each other early in the spring down in Atlanta, in that wonderful hang in the museum, and then we saw the old plane and all of that. At that time, <clears throat> you were still jumping around on the question of mandates. Right. And I think we all know where it was going to end up, but you weren't prepared to go there yet. Right. You are now. Well, we're not there quite yet. Uh, we, I think a lot of companies are looking at the question of mandates and the best way to implement it that's consistent with their culture. Delta, we've done something a little different. We've, we've added an insurance surcharge so that if you're not vaccinated by November the 1st, your insurance costs will go up $200 a month. And that, when we announced that, it's having the same effect, candidly, as a mandate, because we've picked up uh, over 10 points of our employees getting vaccinated just in a handful of weeks. And so we're up to about 85% as a company. And I think we'll be well over 90% by the end of this month. When I heard the insurance surcharge, I thought, bloody hell, that's a clever move by Delta. I mean, how to do a mandate through the back door, in a sense, without having to take the criticism of doing a mandate. Yeah. Which essentially is what you did. Yeah. So, uh, so a mandate in and of itself is a blunt instrument that you, you need to get a shot or you, you lose your job. And knowing that we have a lot of employees that have been here for many years, some that have very deep-seated feelings and concerns about the, the uh, vaccine, I wanted to respect that. But it would, there was a cost to it. If you, if you feel that so strongly about the the vaccine that it gives you that that level would you would you invest close to twenty five hundred dollars a year in avoiding it well not not many people are going to uh, so it was a it was a different way to do it it's a classic case of there's more than one way to skin a cat Inse we had run out of incentives so we decided to try a disincentive and unruly passengers I mean what gives these people who just lose it you know the, we're in a period with a lot of emotional duress. You know, people have been affected during the pandemic. We have new types of people traveling on, on some of our, our uh, airlines that aren't accustomed historically to, uh, to air travel. And I think you know, a lot of people just want to make political statements. We talked earlier in, this, in the year about growth and international. You, you said international would be far, would not be far behind, but it would be far behind, but it would, it would come later. Yeah. It's coming now. It's coming now. It's, it's choppy. Uh, Europe will come before Asia, 
right? And South America will probably be somewhere in between. A lot of it's going to be driven by the vaccines, the effectiveness of, of getting, getting on top of this variant and, and keeping the, and manage it to a relatively low level. Are you ready for the return? We are. We are. We, we weren't quite ready this summer. That we, we all saw that this summer as the, the volumes came roaring back, which was great to see. Uh, internationally, we are absolutely ready.